Welcome to episode 19 of Beginner Web Design, and in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at arrays. And arrays are kind of like variables, but they're really more like objects, because basically what they let you do is assign multiple values to one variable. And I'm going to show you an example of how you can actually use that on your website in just a second. So first, let's take a look at how to create an array. Now there's a few different syntaxes for making one. I'll show you the easiest way, which is to uh, just start with the var. And let's say you want to make a list of the ice cream flavors that you like. So we'll name this ice cream. And uh, to make an array, we just have to type an open bracket. And that's, uh, that symbolizes that this variable is going to be an array. So now we can start listing. So we'll type chocolate. Notice how I put this in quotes because it's a string. If you leave out the quotes, JavaScript is going to think that chocolate is the name of a variable, which it is not in this case. So let's put a comma and maybe put vanilla and then strawberry. And then maybe that's all the, the ice cream flavors that you like. So to close this, we can just type uh, a closing bracket and don't forget the semicolon at the end of that line. And here is our array. Now what we can do with this is a few different things. Now basically we can pull out any one of these val values individually. So if just say we wanted to get vanilla, how do we do that? Well the first thing you need to know is that arrays act a little differently than expected. Each one of the values gets its own ID number. However, it starts at 0 and not 1. So for example, in this case, chocolate is 0, vanilla is 1, and strawberry is 2. So if we say alert, ice cream, open bracket, 2, close bracket, it's going to alert with strawberry. If we change this to 1, it will alert with vanilla, and 0 would be chocolate. So that's just kind of an easy way to pull out a spe specific variable if you know which ID number it is. Now you can add more to this array at any time. So let's just say we wanted to add cookie dough in. Maybe we just started liking cookie dough. Well, you can say ice cream, open bracket, and this is going to be three because zero, one, two, and now the next one is three, uh, close bracket, equals and let's set this one to cookie dough and now if we go ahead and alert this you could see that we get that new value and all the other ones stay in place so if I were to change this to zero at any time it still shows chocolate even though we edited it by adding in a new value so let me go ahead and show you an actual example of how this can be helpful to you. You'll see here that on my HTML page, I have three different buttons. And let's just say we wanted to find out what a tax on one item would be that you're purchasing. And you wanted to say, okay, how much would tax be in the US or in Canada or in Sweden? Well, you can actually do this by using an array. So first of all, let's create an array. Now, I told you that you can just create an array easily by using brackets, but in this case, I'm not going to do that. I want to add every single value individually instead of doing it all in one shot. And that's okay, you can do that. The way to do that is just to type new array. So you're just telling JavaScript that tax is an array, but we haven't really figured out the values yet. So now at any time, we can add in some values, for example, tax 1 equals 25. We could add those. Now here's a little nifty feature about arrays that will really help you. Instead of putting an ID number, we can actually use a string. So for example, we can type tax, open bracket, and let's say uh, US. Close the bracket and then set this to whatever we want. So we'll set this to maybe uh, 0 0.07. Maybe in the US, this item would have 7% tax. Now we can call this at any time, same way we've called the others. 
tax bracket US. And you can see it shows 0 0.07. So that's kind of nifty because you can actually give a name to these specific variables instead of just having them receive random numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and add in two more of them. And this one will be Canada. And maybe this one is 0.09, 9% tax. Uh, let's add in Sweden. And maybe this one is 0. 11% tax. So now we have three different values that are part of this tax array. Now the benefit of putting them into an array is that it's all nice and simplified into one little object. If we have three different objects, if we have var tax US, var tax Canada, it gets a little out of control when we can just easily put them together into one object. That's just my opinion. If you really want to use three separate variables, that's up to you. I just like doing it in an array. So now let's actually add some functionality to these buttons. So let's just say when, uh, when one of these items is clicked, we want it to show how much percentage it would be on one item that maybe costs $50. So let's go ahead and add in a function. So function calculate tax, I'll call it. And uh, let's put in here, uh, I'm going to multiply the price of the item times the tax. So price times tax. And so uh, that, that just seems really simple right now, but uh, I'm just going to leave it like that just so you can visualize it. So the first thing for the price, I already know that the price is going to be definite. It's always going to be $50. So I'll just declare a variable if our price equals 50. And for the tax, we want each button to display separate tax information. So I'm going to add uh, which tax up here, which tax. And then I'll go into my buttons and say on click, let's go ahead and do calculate tax. And it'll be for US. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste this. Canada and Sweden. And then I'll go over here. And let's just say, uh, oops, didn't mean to do that. And let's just put in which tax into brackets next to tax, which is just saying, take tax, which is an array, and then find the value in that array that has the same string as which tax. So for example, when we click Canadian, which tax is set to Canada? So it'll go back in here and say, oh, tax Canada is 0 0.09. Now that we calculate it, we can set this to a variable. So of our uh, final price equals that, and then we'll set it to alert final price. I know this might seem a little confusing, uh, but if you just take it step by step, you'll really see what's going on. And I just realized which tax up here has a capital T, so I have to do that down here as well. Uh, like I've said, it's case sensitive, very important. But if we hit US tax, we get 3.5, just about. Uh, and Canadian is 4.5, and Swedish is 5.5. Basically, it just multiplied 50 times each of these numbers. So that's the way you can kind of use arrays to do uh, some simple little tasks within your HTML page and hopefully you can kind of see how they can work for you and we'll definitely be dealing with them in the future.